Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Harshan Ali Khan. Now I am going to start a new topic in the subject advanced accounting. The new topic is partnership. So partnership accounts one, two partnership parts are there. Partnership accounts one and partnership account two. So in this video, I am going to explain you the complete theory regarding partnership accounts one. The topics I am going to cover up are meaning of partnership, features of partnership. Provisions of the Partnership Act applied whenever the partnership agreement is silent and then capital accounts, fixed capital and fluctuating capital, profit and loss appropriation account, distribution of profit and interest on drawings, admission of partner and retirement of partner. These are the topics we have in this partnership accounts one chapter. So first of all, I'm going to explain you about the meaning of the term partnership. Actually, partnership is a form of business where two or more persons join together, combine together, bring capital, run the business jointly, earn the profit, share the profit between all the partners. So in India, Indian Partnership Act 1932, it has defined the meaning of the term partnership. Partnership is the relationship between persons who have agreed to share the profits of a business carried on by all or any of them acting for all. So this is the definition given by Indian Partnership Act. If we elaborate this definition, first of all, partnership is defined as the relationship. Actually, partnership means relationship between persons. What relationship? The relationship to run the business jointly and to earn the profit, share the profit and to act by all the partners or any of the partners acting for all. Now features of partnership. In examination they will ask you what is the meaning of the term partnership and what are the features. The first feature of partnership is at least two persons are required. A single person cannot form a partnership, at least minimum two partners are required. So according to the um, Companies Act 2013, that will define how many partners will be there in a partnership act. So in partnership, minimum two persons and maximum 50 according to the new Companies Act. According to old Companies Act, 10 in case of banking business and 20 in case of any other business. But that is the old provision. So present, you must remember minimum two and maximum 50. That is the limit. More than 50, it will become an illegal association that is not called a partnership. Then comes agreement. Without agreement, no partnership firm will emerge. There should be an agreement between the persons, two persons or more than two persons. Agreement may be oral agreement or in written form, but it is always preferable to be in writing. Next come lawful business. When two or more persons join together for running a business, the business must be lawful. It should not be illegal. Then sharing of profits. The, the partnership business has been formed to earn the profit and to share the profit by all the partners. The next one carrying by all or any of them acting for all. Every partner have a right to take part in the conduct of the business or some of the partners will act on behalf of all the other partners. That means if a partner has taken an action, it is assumed that this action is of all the partners, not a single partner. Then unlimited liability. Normally partners liability is unlimited. Not only the business assets, but also the personal property is liable to pay the debts, obligations of the business. But from 2008 onwards, a new act was passed in India that is Limited Liability Partnership Act 2008. If a firm is registered under LLP, Limited Liability Partnership Act, then it will have both the features of a partnership and also of the company. In that case, the liability of some of the partners will be limited. So whatever amount invested in the partnership firm, that is liable. Personal property is not liable if it is LLP, Limited Liability Partnership. But normally we can say the partner's liability is unlimited. So these are the features of partnership. 
Now, next thing is provisions of the Partnership Act if the partnership agreement is silent. So, normally a partnership in a partnership firm, all the partners will make a written agreement that is called partnership deed. In that partnership deed, they will write down all the terms and conditions how much capital should be introduced and how much drawings they can make, how the profit will be shared, salary of partner, commission of partner, all these things, interest on capital, interest on drawings, all these things they can mention in the partnership deed. But suppose if the partnership deed is silent, then automatically the provisions of the Indian Partnership Act will apply. So what are the provisions of Indian Partnership Act that will apply if the partnership agreement is silent? The first is sharing profits equally. How the profits will be shared among the partners that will be written, that will be specified in the partnership deed. But if there is no mention of that point in the partnership deed, then Indian Partnership Act says all the partners should share the profit equally. That means if only two partners are there, 50-50. Half, half. If three partners are there, one third, one third, one third. If four partners are there, one four, one four, one four, one four. Like that, equal profit should be shared if the agreement is silent. Next, not entitled to any interest on capital or interest on drawings. If the partnership firm wants, they should write it in the deed that interest on capital will be allowed, interest on drawing will be charged. So if these provisions are not there in the partnership deed, then no interest on capital should be allowed, no interest on drawing should be charged. Next comes not entitled to salary. When a partner has, uh, when a partner has started a partnership, his return is the profit. That means he should not take salary from the partnership. He is not an employee, he is the owner. So in that case, no partner is entitled to salary according to the provisions of Indian Partnership Act. Huh? If a partnership firm wants that some of the partners should be paid salary, it should mention in the partnership deed. If the salary allowed to a partner is mentioned in the deed, then it is paid. It is allowed. Then if a loan is given by any partner, then interest at the rate of 6% per annum will be allowed. One more provision is there. If a partner has given a loan to the partnership firm, then interest at the rate of 6% will be allowed on the loan taken from the partner. Huh? If a higher rate or a lower rate is specified in the deed, then at that rate, the interest on loan will be paid. But if the deed is silent, then loss is 6% interest will be given on the loan taken from the partner. Partner. Then every partner is entitled to take part in the conduct of the business. All the partners will have a right to take part in the conduct of the business. So these are the provisions of the Partnership Act which will be applied if the deed is silent. Next comes capital accounts. So every partner, the capital account is opened to show how much capital he has invested, how much drawings he has made, how much profit the partner is entitled. The profit will be given to partner. So capital accounts. There are two methods of maintaining capital accounts of partners. The first is fixed capital method. In this fixed capital method, the capital of the partner will remain fixed from beginning of the year till end of the year. No change. The capital will remain intact. That means the adjustment regarding the interest on capital, interest on drawings or drawings or salary paid to partner, commission allowed to partner and share of profit. All these adjustments will be done in a new account called current account. So two accounts will be opened for each partner. One partner's capital account and another one is partner's current account. Capital account fixed, no change. All adjustment will be done in the current account. So at the end of the year, the partner's current account may show debit balance or may show credit balance. Suppose if the partner's current account show credit balance, 
then that balance will be shown on the liability side of the balance sheet. But if a partner's current account shows debit balance, that partner's debit balance will be shown on the asset side. This is the first method, fixed capital method. The second method is fluctuating capital method. Name itself is clear, fluctuating. That means the capital at the beginning and capital at the end of the year will not be the same. Only one account will be opened, partner's capital account, no current account. In that case, all adjustments regarding interest on capital, interest on drawings or drawings, salary, commission, share of profit, all these adjustments will be done in the capital account itself. So capital account will change from beginning of the year till end of the year. That is called fluctuating capital method. Now I'm coming to the next point called profit or loss appropriation account. See here, in case of sole trading concern, whatever profit earned by the sole trader, the whole profit will be added to capital directly. But here, there are two or more than two owners are there, partners are there. The first of all, we need to calculate the cap, uh, I mean profit. After that, we have to distribute to the profit among the partners. That means appropriate the profit among the partners. So a new account is opened called profit and loss appropriation account. So as usual, first of all, profit and loss account is prepared. In that profit and loss account, as usual, we find out the net profit. After calculating net profit, one extension account is opened. That extension account is the profit and loss appropriation account. Right. The main purpose of this profit and loss account, uh, profit and loss appropriation account is to show the division of profit among the partners. So in this appropriation account, what are the items we'll take? On credit side of profit and loss appropriation account, we take the net profit which we get from profit and loss account. So first we make the profit and loss account, find out the net profit. That net profit, you take it on the credit side of Profit and loss appropriation account. The so credit side profit. The next one is interest on drawings. If any interest on drawings are there, that interest on drawing will be taken on the credit side of profit and loss appropriation account. Then debit side, we take interest on drawings. Oh, sorry, interest on capital. Debit side, interest on capital. Salary allowed to partner. Commission allowed to partner and the share of profit. After deducting, credit side we have taken net profit and interest on drawings, take the total. From the credit side total, deduct the debit items, that is interest on capital, salary, commission, then we'll get the net profit. That net profit is a divisible profit among the partners. That is profit and loss appropriation account. Now I will show you how this account will appear. This account is credited with net profit as per profit and loss account and interest on drawing, if any. And debited with interest on capital, salary, commission, payable to partners. Then the net profit after adjustment is distributed among the partners in the agreed profit sharing ratio. Whatever profit sharing ratio is there, in that ratio, the divisible profit will be distributed. Right? However, if capital accounts are fixed, then the same is transferred to current account. Now, the divisible profit the profit which is divided among the partners will be transferred to capital account or current account, whatever case may be. If the capital accounts are fixed, then the profit will be transferred to current account. If the capital accounts are fluctuating, then the profit will be transferred to capital account. So that's it. The format of profit and loss appropriation account is like this. Profit and loss appropriation account by net profit as per PL account, then by interest on drawings. These two items will come on the credit side. Debit side, interest on capital, interest on loan from partner, salary or commission, then net profit. Net profit transferred to capital or current account. This net profit is divided. That's it. This is the profit and loss appropriation account. The last topic in this video, I'm going to explain to you about interest on drawings. Sometimes the partnership agreement specifies that whenever a partner makes drawings, Drawings means when a partner withdraw the money from the business for personal use. So when drawings are made, if dates are given when the partner has withdrawn the money, 
then according to dates we can calculate how many months how many months are there since he has withdrawn the money on that basis we can calculate interest on drawing suppose if the date of drawings are not given then we take the total drawings during the year and calculate the interest for six months assuming the drawings are made in the middle of the year for example a partner has withdrawn different amounts on different dates but dates are not given the total amount withdrawn during the year is let it be 10,000 we don't know when he has withdrawn in the problem it is not specified then it is better to calculate interest on drawings for six months that means 10,000 into percentage whatever percentage is there suppose 10 percent so 10,000 into 10 by 100 into 6 by 12 only for six months we are calculating if dates are not given Huh, suppose if withdrawals are made evenly in the beginning of each month, interest is to be calculated for the whole amount for six and a half month. Sometimes it will be specified in the partnership deed that every partner can withdraw, has to withdraw the money every month at the beginning of the month, a fixed amount. For example, a fixed amount of 1000 rupees per month, every month at the beginning of the month, partner is withdrawing. So first month beginning 1000, second month beginning 1000, third month beginning 1000, like that he has withdrawn every month evenly throughout the year. Then we calculate the total drawings. Every month 1000, so total drawings are 12,000. So 12,000 into 10%. Suppose if the interest rate is 10%. So 10,000 into 10 by 100 into 6.5 by 12. Six and a half month. 6.5 by 12 if the drawings are made evenly at the beginning of the month suppose if the agreement says drawings have to be made at the end of each month that means in the partnership deed it is specified that a partner can withdraw the money only at the end of the month fixed amount 1000 at the end of first month 1000 at the end of second month 1000 at the end of third month like that every month end of the month 1000 in that case Total drawings during the year is 12,000. Suppose the rate of interest 10%. So 12,000 into 10 by 100 into 5.5 by 12. Five and a half months. Five and a half means 5.5 divided by 12. Like this, we charge, we charge interest on drawings. That's it. So these are the provisions we have to remember. In examination, not only problems but also theory will be asked. And remember, in order to understand the problem, you must have a stronghold on theory also. So be perfect regarding what is the meaning of the term partnership, what are the features of partnership, what are the different methods of maintaining the capital account, capital account, current account, then profit and loss appropriation account, what are the provisions of partnership act that will be applied whenever the partnership deed is silent. Lastly, interest on drawings what are the provisions how to calculate interest on drawings so inshallah we'll continue our discussion on this partnership in the next video in the next video inshallah we'll start the admission of a partner what are the provisions regarding admission of a 